Hello. Tarkley's as good a man as you can find on this godforsaken coast. He has some wrongs to right, no doubt. What they are, I've never asked, and I never will. If not for Tarkley, we'd all be dead. I can think of only one reason why Piety would be here. She's interested in the sickness that pervades this place, the corruption that raises the dead and twists the wildlife into aberrations. The Merry Gull ran aground on the Tidal Island trying to escape from pirates. As tends to happen here in Rayclast, her crew met a far worse fate, cannibals. Tarkley pulled Bestel from some hideaway in the wreckage, the ship's only survivor. Whether the ordeal fractured his mind or whether it was just in his nature all along, it's clear that Bestel sails a different course to the rest of us. Mervale dwells in the caves beyond the wrecks, at the head of Siren's Cove. Leave her be, and we can only hope that she continues to return the favor. Lion Eye's watch isn't much, but it's ours. We could use you here, while you live. Take care. Poor Nessa. Not even a mother herself, and yet she cares for us all. And what a sickly, pathetic brood we are. May she live to have her own family, a real family. If anyone deserves that, Nessa does. Tarkley rescued from the waves. A stricken bestial, fate slave. From fallen crew and broken bark, Bestel lives thanks to Tark. Lee. <laughs> Arrow, the merry gull's cook, washed up on the rocks over yonder. Dead as a doornail he was, buried him myself. Then, a few days later, I see him on the beach. A little worse for wear, but upright. Shuffling about. A land full of disturbing surprises, this Rayclast. Siren's Cove belongs to Mervale. Those butchering buccaneers sailed off that way. The ones that plundered my uh, poor Mary Gull. Twould be poetic justice if they'd stopped off for a sing-along with Mervale's lovely daughters on their way home. <laughs> Piety's raised Chevron's barricade. Not that I was likely to ever make the trip inland, but it was nice to have the dream. Hang on a moment. Got a stray thought seeking safe harbor. Piety's one to watch her own back, so she'd never cut off an escape route from possible trouble inland. The cunning witch must be able to lower that barricade from the other side, somehow. Mm-hmm. Don't tell Tarkley, but they're the foulest foul I've ever tasted. Still, exiles can't be choosers. While we live, we are blessed. So, you managed to salvage Shaky Ann's druggery. Nicely done. Nessa will put it to good use. More than that, benumbed quack Optin ever did. Still alive, are we? Founded by Marseus Lionai as a supply station for his campaigns against the Karui. In its day, Lionai's watch could be defended by just a small garrison of well-armed legionnaires. What have I got? A handful of starving criminals with driftwood clubs and rusted hatchets. If you have to quench your curiosity about Mervale, go look at the Corsairs that haunt the grave of ships. Like any mother, Mervale's got hungry mouths to feed. That hat Bestel wears? Saw him pluck it from the real captain's head right before the cannibals barbecued the poor bastard. Waste not, want not, I suppose. Yes, Bestel's got a gift for telling tales, but I'd never call him a liar. The truth's always in there. You just have to listen for it. Though they might look like you or I, behind those eyes there's nothing but darkness and hunger. Whatever's got inside those folks, is not even close to being human. Nessa's the one keeps the rest of us from losing our minds. To be honest, when she first arrived, I didn't think she'd survive more than a day, two at most. She's been proving me wrong every dawn since. 
Heard a bard once sing that the fairest flowers bloom in the foulest places. He was bloody well right. There's many a way to die in Rayclast. Most of them are mercifully quick. But you get caught alive by the Goatmen. You'll wish by any god you believe in that you hadn't. I've heard some of the more superstitious exiles say there's a deity these Goatmen worship. Abarath, Eater of Agony. Sounds like a right bastard if you ask me. So if the Goatmen hand you an invitation to go have dinner with the Cloven God, tell them where to stick it. I've seen many an exile pass through Lion Eye's watch, and many more that simply pass on. Those letters are my way of keeping track, of remembering. Oriath might want to forget us all, but I'll be damned if I will. That medicine chest you found, it'll do more than you might think. The medicine will run out, it always does, but Nessa won't. Give that girl a sliver of hope and she'll carry it to the end of the world. Farewell. Frankly, I would have been surprised if you hadn't recognized me. Yes, tis I, Captain Sigmund Fairgraves, wave tamer, pirate bane, and conveyor of civilization to barbaric lands. So, what am I doing here? Apart from blowing my own bugle? I'm marooned, languishing, thanks to a pair of pretty blue eyes. Stuck fast in the filthy mud of Rayclast, thanks to one sultry little slave girl. I liberated her from the flesh pits of Trathos, and she repaid me in full with sleight of hand and swift feet. Turn the... My loveliest neighbor in this most salubrious of neighborhoods. Facing Mervale and finding my all flame are two mutually exclusive endeavors. I'd much prefer you to live to see your errand fulfilled. Although it is possible that my wayward slave girl fell prey to one of Mervale's slithering progeny. If that be the case, you look resourceful enough to handle a tentacled wench or two. But if Mervale herself has my flame, be very wary. That necklace of hers provides the old siren with some subtle wiles indeed. If the history books are to be believed, Doris of the Daring presented the necklace to Mervale on bended knee. And from the moment he placed that little chunk of Rayclast at her throat, Mervale began to sing. It's told her sweet voice grew to fill even the largest concert halls of Oriath, and brought warmth to even the coldest of hearts. But then she began to change. Her mind and body twisted, as did her songs. Well, the sweetness remained, while the sanity fled. Knowing what little I do about the powers that lie dormant here in Rayclast, I'd surmise that if you have Mervale's necklace, you have the Siren's voice. May fair winds favor you.
Pruning a branch can save a tree. My all flame, my blessed, damned all flame. Oh, you want your moon, the firelight now, do you? Unfortunately, necessity is what it is, and for the all flame to give life, it must first be kindled with life. And since suitable kindling is in short supply around these parts, I have little option but to make do with what I have. Namely, you. Please understand that as a gentleman of honor, it pains me greatly to do this. Hard times call for hard hearts. I'm sure... Were the circumstances reversed, you do precisely the same. You were a good man in a bad situation, Fairgraves. If you must take your chances with the Siren, then have this. It may be of some help. But please, know that you don't have to do this. Tarkley and I are getting used to having you around. Be well. Fairgraves was a good man. A fine explorer. He opened the door to many a new world, for better or for worse, usually for worse when it came to the natives. There's some peace in the knowledge that he now rests where he should. Let's not speak of Fairgraves again, shall we? He was an inspiration to many. It would be a shame to spoil a good hero. Welcome. The Eternal Empire has some right nasty leftovers. Whether it's something in the air or in the water, no one stays dead in Rayclast. Not the first time. 
can take a little while, but sooner or later corpses wake up and go looking for breakfast. Farewell. Welcome, husband. We knew in our hearts that you would find us. Come, Doreso. Ambrosia and Amarissa must meet their father. Come, my love. Return to your family. Rami waits at the cavern entrance for the passing aspirants. One at a time, he pulls them in from the snowstorm and covers their mouth as I slice their throats. Blood stains the cavern floor. Rami pulls in the last straggler and we make quick work of her. Just we two remain. Before Rami makes this realization, I plunge my blade into his eye. I alone will lead the new twenty. One rung closer to the top of the food chain. memory. Were all mute wind this vicious? I certainly hope I was not one of them. Good travels, friend. would only slow me down.
I'm not up to that just yet. That would only slow me down. Let's throw face!
your love for a man. That's what did this to you, Mervail. Duresso gave me the gem, kissed me, promised that he would be by my side forever. I sang for him. I sang for Oriath with his gem at my throat. Kalisa's gem. Kalisa's voice. I sang in her echo, performing arias that had once made the Empire weep. I listened to Kalisa's lullabies in my dreams. I gave myself to her music, mind and body. Duresso left me for San with a promise to free me from Kalisa. I begged him not to go, tried to show him the wonder of my transformation, the beautiful daughters he would soon meet. He couldn't see. None of them could see. I fled from their hatred. When Duresso returns, I will cast his cure away. I will teach him what true love is. I thought you were a fool for seeking out Mervale. A fool in love with death. Now, I don't know. Still, you've delivered this coast from the terrors that long held sway here. We may now find some respite, and that's more than any of us could have hoped for. But please, consider this. What have you become when even nightmares fear you? killer, aren't you? That singing squid didn't stand a chance. Knew it from the first time I saw those sharp peepers of yours. My pirates notwithstanding, I thank you on behalf of all the fallen brethren of the waves. Now that the final cadence has been played, no one need remember Mervale's song. Damn me. I didn't think it possible. All these souls Mervale and her brood have consumed over the years. You've done right by those that are dead, and by those who still might live. Stay sharp out there, 